My name is Matt Chinoski, also known as the Waxhead. I'm a professional surfer, building classic cars, uh, also a commentator and surfing mentor. So splitting my time between the surf industry and cars, it's a really nice mix at the moment. From an early age, watching, I guess you could say, the surfing tribe elders, surfing all the way to the beach, and it just didn't make sense to ride a shortboard when it was smaller. So I gravitated to my dad's longboard when it got small and he was struggling to catch waves. He would have a short session and I'd borrow the longboard. And that's how my longboarding began, just riding the longboard when the wave suited. And I'd ride a shortboard when the wave suited that as well. And I carried that right through to the present day. Seeing as I grew up riding all boards and gravitating towards single fins, Joel Tudor was a huge influence, absolutely, and still is to this day. Surfing a lot with Ellis Erickson over the last decade as well, seeing his transition from high performance thrusters to single fins and alternative boards was inspiring for me too, because we had a similar body shape. Aussie Wright, in terms of inspiration and bucking the trend, Aussie Wright was a huge artistic inspiration, following his own path and the beat of his own drum. Yeah, Aussie Wright, Joel Tudor growing up, Bob McTavish, and as I've learnt more about surf history, Barry Kanayapuni and his exploits in Hawaii. So my favourite board at the moment is a BK from 1967 and I'll have to say where I'm sort of going with my surfing is BK inspired as well. was always an outcast, so riding a longboard wasn't any different. I was always the smallest person in the football team. I always had a super long last name that no one could pronounce. And you develop a bit of a tough skin, and I think you needed that if you were to be a little different in the 90s and 2000s. It definitely was a lot of frustrating people when I was growing up, missing waves and shortboards while I had a longboard. You just have to sit there and smile and wait your turn, because if you took every wave, it would end very different than what it would now. Yeah, getting sent in was the least of your worries. <laughs> I just feel, I feel so stoked to be a part of Sydney surf culture, knowing the history and where it's come from. The Men of Wooden Foam is a film that really, for the first time, shone a light on what the driving reason behind the surf culture boom was. And it was these guys that made surfboards, which are like yo-yos at the time. Surfing was not a professional sport. Surfing was not in the mainstream. Riding boards was a relatively niche market and it took six pioneers through the wood era into the foam in the late 50s and into the 60s to generate an industry. It meant a lot to me to be a part of that and I'll always be thankful to Phil for letting me sit in on those interviews with guys like Danny Keogh. Didn't get to connect with Scotty Dillon, he was in hospital at the time, but we had Midget on camera as well talking about his heroes. We had McDonough and Bill Wallace and Gordon Woods who just passed away. So very sad there's only one of them standing now and that's Danny Keogh and to be yeah back, back, backstage and interview those guys and help with some of the questions was yeah I'm almost starting to tear up now because all of this and everything that I've been uh, able to achieve and everything I'm watching and world surfing happening was can be really put down to just a couple of characters in the world and Duke was one of them for sure and the Brookvale Six was a another huge factor into where we're at today. So huge props to, yeah, Men of Wooden Foam. If you haven't seen Men of Wooden Foam, look it up because 
it's a really special doco and yeah we got to interview them while they're still standing I knew surfing was always going to be in my life in some shape or form but a professional longboarder at the time wasn't an aspiration or I guess an attainable goal there wasn't a lot of money in longboard competition and the style of surfing that was represented didn't inspire me and classic cars was our family business. My dad runs a smash repair shop specializing in auto restoration and transitioning into cars and that project management element that I learned worked really well. And I think the lines of the classic cars, that stuff really inspires me. It's like looking at a beautiful gloss polished surfboard. It's, it's hard work, but it's super rewarding. And that's been a really good aspect of the last 10 years, 15 years of my life is working with my father and, and our team at Taylor and Botham. Life's too short to worry about what you know anyone else thinks. You just do something that you think's cool and it feels cool. And yeah, if you have the disposable income and a little bit of time to tinker on a project, why not make it a an extension of your individuality? And surfing is one of those few things where a six-year-old and a sixty-six-year-old can be an equal. It's they can be out in the water enjoying the exact same thing, that same wave that's that's rolling through, has the same joy attached to it.